Hey, so I love ethnographic art, uh, especially from uh, Central South America and Africa. And we have a figure here from Colima, Mexico. And that's a province and the name of a city in western Mexico. And this is a warrior figure from around 200 BC to 200 AD. Now, hopefully he would actually put on clothes before he would go out to war. One could only hope, but he's not wearing any here. At least not besides the helmet. But the weapon, as you can see, is a kind of a flat war club. And that was a real common thing in Central South America and really around the world. You could go to Fiji, New Zealand. It's a, a very common uh, indigenous weapon. And, by the way, so, you know, these weapons are portals to cultures, and you always get to pick up a little bit of knowledge and learn, so that's where Colima is. Right, way down there, right about in the center, on the west. And uh, it's still one of the least populated areas in Mexico. And the name is, if I got this right, it seems to be kind of a combination of domain of the volcano. You know, domain, volcano, people, something like that. And there's a volcano. They have a very active one, in fact. So I just thought that was cool. If you remember nothing else about that region of Mexico, then you'll remember that they had warriors like this guy here, that they used weapons like this, of course, just being just one. So if you know of no other weapon from kind of the Mesoamericans, then you would instantly assume this is probably a, it's hard to pronounce, a macuahiral, which is the flattened wooden club with the obsidian shards along the edges. This is not that. At least I'm pretty sure that's not what the artist was going for uh, back around the turn of the millennium. And, you know, this still provides some advantages. It's not razor sharp because it doesn't have obsidian on it. Uh, but you have a reduced striking surface. You're going to swing it edge on in both directions. This version here is two-handed, as you can see. So that's going to provide plenty of power. And they were usually fighting, you know, essentially unarmored uh, opponents. There was armor of various kinds in this part of the world, but nothing like what we would think of. So it's going to be enough to hurt, break bones, and finish your opponent. I train with the traditional karate weapon, the uh, Eku, which is a boat oar. I have a video on that. And uh, funny enough, I think it uh, would be very similar in terms of use. So let's try to get a close-up here. So it's, this thing's aged really well. It just looks super cool, right? And usually, you know, warrior figures, obviously they can be represented in various ways. But this one's cool because it's kind of a, uh, a clay version, if you know what I mean. It's kind of a pottery type uh, method that, was, that they came up with. So it looks very different from the typical, like stone representations, you know, whatever, hieroglyphs, paintings, you name it. Normally you wouldn't see a patina like this, you know, aging like this, on a figure from roughly, you know, 1 AD or CE. So I think that's pretty neat. And they had a wide variety of figures that they did, and all of them were amazing. This one just happens to be of a warrior, so of course it caught my interest. He's probably about two feet tall, something like that, and, you know, to our modern eyes, he might not look very fierce, uh, but they were tenacious warriors. The conquistadors, who had so many advantages militarily, despite their small numbers, right, including disease and cannons and war dogs and, you know, muskets and everything else, actually had to try four times to finally establish a beachhead in this region of Mexico. So that's a testament to these warriors. Uh, other thing about Colima is it's, this is called a Colima figure, like in the, in the little note card that came with it, but various societies and cultures existed in that region. So like Toltec, you might recognize that name, uh, you know, Mayan, you name it. There's actually kind of a rotating basis. So this is more about the geography than the particular culture should note he's got a pretty good stance too, right? This is similar to what you'd see like an Okinawan bow fighting, go over to Europe with quarter stabs, you name it. You're kind of dividing the weapon up in thirds. It's going kind of across your body and up and down, if you will. So you're protecting yourself as much as you can. You're ready to strike with either end. Uh, he looks like he knows what he's doing. And there he is. I think he looks great. It's really hard for me to see a Mesoamerican mask of any kind that I don't think looks awesome. Uh, so it's not surprising I really like the face and kind of the blank expression. Uh, you know, different cultures try to portray their warriors in different ways, always trying to get across the idea that these guys are fierce and you don't want to mess with them. So it's interesting to see this kind of stoic version, whereas other things in the Far East and whatnot, you have real exaggerated expressions, right, to kind of get across the, the ferocity. But it's not what they went for here. So it's a great looking piece, and I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks.